Welcome to another episode of The 116 Life right here on Sirius XM Channel 140 here on Holy Culture Radio. Listen, thank you. We love you. That's one thing I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the truth. We love you here at uh, The 116 Life. We're so happy that you guys are here tapped in. As y'all see, things are a little different. You know what I'm saying? We got a little different things rolling on. So we know, of course, you know, we usually, it's usually two of us here. But today, I'm a solo co-host, y'all. I'm a solo co-host. But the thing is, is my guest Mm. is none other than the SVP, the head of A&R himself. Ace Harris is our guest today. (laughs) And we have a great, we have a lot of great things going up to Ace. We have a lot of great things. So... This show's different because, you know, we're all wrapping up like, you know, Spotify rap just happened, you know, things like that. Everyone's talking about their top five Mm -hmm. and things like that. So we want to talk about and dive into all the releases that came out of Reach this year. And who better to talk about it than you yourself? So over overarching, looking at the whole year, what do you think about how the releases came out, how everyone rolled out as everyone as a whole? What do you think? No, thank thank you, Mia. I mean, it's really dope to, you know, tap in with you. I mean, you're a real one. You're a real like. CHH fan, 116 fan. Yeah, so yeah. this is not just me, you know, going through these songs because you really do live through this stuff. We ain't, we ain't gonna put you on blast and, and list your Spotify, you know, rap. I'm not oh, gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> list. I'm not gonna list mine either. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna keep that under wraps. But the, but so much, so much good music came out this a year. Lot, I think it's. I, I feel like we're in a Christian. I want. I, I just don't want to say Christian hip hop. Mm-hmm. I think because Reach Records, we embody the essence of hip hop and other genres as well. I feel like we're in a Christian music renaissance mm. with the internet, and I think there's so much growth. We see everybody going viral every other day. Yeah. Shout out Caleb. Shout out Forrest Frank. Shout out Alex John. There's so many mm-hmm. dope artists. Shout out child like CC that are just killing it. But I think it'd be dope to kind of walk through the songs that um, from our label, from our roster, that the fans and, and the listeners just been continually rocking with and I'm just feel overjoyed to kind of go through it and kind of look at the the year we had so listen so you kind of did a, a segue within okay. yourself talking about uh you said how we we walked into so many different yeah. things so let's dive into the year Hovey had for sure with so many for different sure. songs I feel like Hovey we're talking uh off uh camera and Hovey had such a great year this year you know for so sure. many great songs went viral the tour happened walk featuring Lecrae yeah. happened alter love like that used by you um so many great things so what which what, which one do you want to talk let's talk about first no, I, I really want to let like give so this all because we, we we could be here all day so no, i'm, I'm gonna real. try i'm gonna try to keep it um as as like fast as we can mm-hmm. so um let's let's start with walk so okay. obviously we we have planned for 2023 to come with some new songs mm-hmm. we have recorded walk in 2022 and to be honest this is me and i can say this i think hovey and lecrae will let me say this we made it we were excited when we made it uh-huh. and then like afterwards we were just honestly cool off of it like, that's me um, that's Hovey and Lecrae. We just were like, it's a good song, but we didn't know if it was great and it really wasn't supposed to come out. It, okay. <laughs> Here's why I'm excited about yeah. this episode because I love hearing behind the scenes things like that because when yeah. we hear it, we're like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Every, we were hearing this song everywhere. It was very much so a, a staple, I believe. And y'all saying that, y'all just were like, eh, I, I mean, mean, it's cool. We were sometimes as creatives, obviously I play that role so you can kind of get insecure and overthink. Mm, okay. And um, shout out my a and team, Alex and Dre. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to find a song for 116 Day, and mm-hmm. we're kind of going back and forth. I mean, the team liked the song, but it wasn't like everybody was like, it was just like, okay, whatever. If it mm-hmm. comes out, cool. And then my a r team was like, yo, y'all tripping. This got to come out. And Jeez. I I denied. We just kind of get it going. It, it, we had really not a lot of marketing set up for it. It was like mm-hmm. a lot of post-marketing. And we posted the clip. Lecrae was for it. It was on MLK Day. Mm-hmm. Lecrae made a dope segue to kind of highlight the song in light of MLK Day. Jamie Foxx, even though... I don't want to say his name right now, but other celebrities started posting the song. It took off, and I think that song really kicked off the year, not just for Hovey, but just for the whole 116 movement because um, yeah. it just kind of set the set the tone. And with an unashamed message, Walk in a, a drill record production with Crazy. Shout out Carvello and Manny Sam for everybody that worked on it. So Yeah, I want to talk yeah. a little bit about uh, songs like Alter for and sure. Used By You because it was something about those songs, and I think even just as Hovey as an artist, it, it just comes off just so... Uh, just like in its purest form, sure, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, Lord, I want to be used by you and uh, lead me to your altar. Like, you know what I'm saying? What was it like? Because I know that you had a hand in it, you right. know, being behind the scenes with those. Talk about the creation of those songs and how those nah, songs for sure. I mean, shout out Forrest Frank. Um, the, the No Longer Bound song obviously was going viral around mm-hmm. the time Walk Drop. And we know we wanted to have a record that could probably follow up. And we we thought it would be dope to have, you know, a, a, a Hovey song featuring Forrest. 
Um, some people didn't like that idea, you know what I'm saying? But we were just like, let's just run it back. Let's see, yeah. And so we were just let's, we just started creating. We had a bunch of other ideas that we were like, shout out Forrest too. He was he was just like, man, look, your next song got to be your best song. No facts. He kind of and we kind of felt the moment, mm -hmm. and we just went into. I mean, I dropped the A and R corner video on it, which kind of explains how it all happened. But essentially, I was just going through some 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 old uh, ideas I had. And some hook ideas I had wrote, and then the song just kind of just fell in our laps, to be honest. And Both then, songs, yeah, like Sheesh. also just kind of fell in our lap. We made it. We knew we had something, and I think it was just a perfect like follow up to No Longer Bound, mm -hmm. and it kind of set the year off for Hovey. His other songs in his catalog started to go like viral, like beautiful, yeah. and have me, and it just and it, it was all consistently um, in the same sonic, and it just kind of worked. And then we just kind of just trusted the sound we were building, mm -hmm. um, and just b being like true to what we create mm -hmm. and people just started to resonate with it which i think says a lot about the fans and the listeners that's why this episode is for y'all for real for real not nah, um, for real listen so yeah. I'll, i i want to talk about because because you're with uh you spent time with hovey um what was it like because you've seen him from like last year you know so yeah. what, what would you say was the difference between hovey last year in the studio and the right. hovey this year in the studio yeah, that's with a the great question and everything like that? i would say when he was cutting his verse on altar and used by you i was literally with him through mm -hmm. every line at every bar i was in there with him i would say this is why it's fun to see artists grow and develop like his growth and development and, and, and like his confidence as a as a as an artist it was just shaped like he, he there's a line on altar at the end of it that's like um carrying buckets is saying father i'm saying your name but so far from it um this is a covenant blood in my vein like he was rapping that bar and i was like yo i knew in my spirit man that this guy was literally in another zone creatively not a, not to flex his artistry like no, yeah. as if it's giving credit to him because obviously god you know gives us the power to create but i saw like a shift in his artistry mm -hmm. and a new level that i was like yo this is fun to watch he's locked in and, it, and it, he was locked in yeah and the tour and everything yeah. that happened were you able to go see uh, yeah while he was on oh, yeah. tour we went to a few shows um i, I saw him in new york saw me uh atlanta it was just great and i think um in used by you came and then Love Like That came. Yes, talk then, about love. Oh, uh, man, we, Love Like we, That we was got, so special. It was just a moment like I had just had my son. So so I, I had made the early idea to love like that literally in my Reach Records office. I sometimes don't need a... I sometimes create better with like production and not big rooms. I mm -hmm. get my best ideas kind of being detached from like the stage of... Mm. So I'm in my office literally with like my doctor's lights on and it's like just going through loops. Hovey was like, I need some more ideas. I need more ideas. And I was like, all right, here, call me kind of like on my head. Like, bro, we need to get some other producers. We need some more beats. Mm. Also, it's going crazy. What's next? Right. And, um, and I just found some loops and like made that early draft of the beat in like 20 minutes. Sheesh. Without a, I just was throwing stuff together, sent it to Hovey, but it was really rough. Fast forward, the idea that he had the, he, he like came up with the hook um, on FaceTime when I sent it to him. And then, the idea still needed some, it needed some more work, yeah. and we knew it was that Jersey vibe, and we just wasn't really sure if it should be him by himself. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, Used by You comes out. I had my kid in June, and I'm on I'm on paternity leave, and I'm kind of like detached from creating. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Yo, what about this idea? I played it for Tori Deshawn. He loves it." And I'm like so detached. I'm like, "Yo, hear the stem to the yeah. beat. Do whatever, whatever y'all want. want." And they basically sent the final version back. Oh, shut up! And I'm like. Yo, this is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> so yeah, it just kind of happened organically, and um, yeah, that's kind of how it came. Man, it came talk about. about a First Corinthians banger, man. Nah, I, that's sure. always a real good one. Okay, so uh, we talked on Hovey. Yeah. Now let's shift gears to Wanda. Let's talk about Wanda. Talk about Wanda. She's year having Wanda a year. Had. Such a year, man. Oh, uh, started yeah. things off with winning. Yeah. You know what? Such a great song, and then of course, like further down the line, she had songs like You and Wanda. Is so uh, she, she has this great diversity yeah. and versatile you know next to her and then also doing songs like wild and free with doe in her r&b yeah. bag and then we got stepping in the light the double singles so um where do you want to start as far All as right, that? Well, so with I, I will say this i i, I don't want to disclose my spotify wrapped or my top songs because i feel like i'm gonna get in trouble mm -hmm. but i want to say that yo one day's winnings in my top listen five. <laughs> it's, it's such it's I, mean, I love working out to that song man and i so one day knows i was like a little nitpicky on that song before it came out because I knew the other ideas that we were working on yeah. in the clip, but there was some like post production and it, the, and it, she definitely went in her bag and made that song better. Shout mm -hmm. out Clark, but um, she kicked it off strong with winning like that. First of all, that phrase with Wanda and what she represents in her brand. When an artist can like make a dope record mm -hmm. that encapsulates who they the, are, who they are, yeah. 
it's like well, say less. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like yeah, that, that song is one day like that's a holy girl record. Mm-hmm. Holy it's, girl it's 100% is for sure. Um, and then um, went and went off, and then you came out, and I was I was rocking with that. But I was I really want to talk about Wild and Free. Oh, okay, let's um, go. It's such a good, it's like, yeah. a, 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 uh, I was talking to, uh, shout out to Aaron Knight. So it's, such a, it's such a good earworm. It's just yeah. like you, can, you can listen to it just over and over. And Doe being on that song as yeah. well, she just adds such a nice, like, melodic touch. It nah, was just, for sure. oh, and, and, and that song, I think, encapsulates um, just the essence of, you know, um, black women celebrating their love for the mm-hmm. Lord and mm-hmm. being free mm-hmm. in that. And I think, sonically, the beat matches that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The record matches that. So uh, what happened was we were... We had that hook idea from another camp. Shout out to Dre and Alex. As always, those are my superstar A&R team. And um, one day heard the idea, heard the hook, got verses on it. And we thought it would be really dope to do a song with her and mm-hmm. Doe. Um, why? Because Doe had, had used one day on a feature, I think the year before, before yeah. she even like was where she was now. And so we got the record done. And then we shout out to Ron Hill. And we got Doe on the record. We drove to Nashville. Me... Jordan L'Oreal, who wrote the record, and Dre drove to Nashville, and Wande and Nays drove behind us. Um, we drove to Nashville for a day trip, pull up on Doe, we cut her part, um, and drove back at like four in the morning. Man. <laughs> yeah, so it but was, it was worth it, It right? was so worth it. Yeah. And, and when that record came out, the content, the visual shout out the marketing team, it was just explosive. Like, yeah, for sure. And it, it, it was one of the records where competitively, we I definitely wanted to like, to beat one of her top songs. Like, Don't Worry About It is like the Holy Grail. Yeah, You know what I'm fact. saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and but, it's always, but, it's just, but yeah, yeah. It, it just proves how the power of collaboration. I remember talking to yeah. Wanda a while ago and she was like, I really want to collab with like more worship artists. Like, you know, more gospel She artists. did, yeah. And the fact that, you know, having this release with Doe, you kind of think like, well, how can you have something where you're true to who you are, but right. yet also let Doe do her thing and then hearing what you guys created with that. It's just, like you said, like you just feel... You feel like frolicking in the meadow. You know For what I'm sure. saying? When you hear this one. Dope. Um, it. Now stepping in the lights, a new one that's yeah. been going crazy. Super crazy. Super like I was I was driving my brother the other day. He was like, I want to play a song. He queued up and then <laughs> in the light came on. I was like, what you know about nah. this? He said, Oh, I love this. And then song. did you see like some of the influencers that like did the man rocking like, with it? Oh, I forget one of the guys' names, but anyway, he kills it. Um like I think it had like almost like a million and a half views. Yeah. Like man. that song that okay. In the light, um, Steppin's a vibe too. Mm-hmm. In the light is probably my favorite one day song mm, of all time. Man, and this is why. Um, whenever you can have a song that embodies the true essence of an artist, for for example, In the Light has one day rapping, right? Mm-hmm. And it also has her singing, and then it also has that like kind of Afro flavor with mm-hmm. the beat. When you mix all three of those elements. That's like a true one day record. It is. And I shout out the team and everybody that helped put that record together. And then it's like literally celebrating like, man, that song is like, man, that song is like, like, I don't think you guys understand, like for, for black women and for culture, that record is sonically not supposed to, it's not supposed to be that good. What do you mean by that? Like to have a record that embodies dancing, femininity, Mm. Christianity, swagger, Mm. um, beauty, and it's like to the Lord in a pure way. Yeah. Like that record, nobody else but Wanda can really do that record. Yeah. And it's not supposed to happen in this Asian culture with the way the way music is made. Like, like the naysayers, the gatekeepers, and some of the old heads. I don't think they understood what talent can come when you embody who you are and make mm. a dope record for the Lord. Like that record wouldn't have existed ten years ago. Yeah, I feel like with us touching on Hovey and Wanda with the year they had, you just got. Um, more of a burst of this, their authenticity. For sure. Not even just in who they are and their artistry, but in their faith as well. And we're going to come back yeah. and we're going to talk about more artists. We're calling this episode Reach Wrapped because we're going to yeah. wrap up the whole year talking about everyone who released. And y'all, we got Ace who's going to be here with me. We're talking all about all these amazing artists on the releases they had. Don't go anywhere. It's the 116 Life here on Channel 140 on Sirius XM, Holy Culture Radio. We'll be right back. And we're back right here on the 116 Life, right here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. We're happy you're back here with us one more time. Listen, it's Reach Wrapped. Listen, we're wrapping you with all the amazing sure. songs, all the big wins, all the songs, all the things, all the things that happened uh, with Reach uh, this year. And we have the, the best person to talk about it. He was my co-host, but today he's the guest. We have Ace Harris, sure. head of uh, A&R over here at Reach. Listen, okay, so we're going to go ahead and shift gears. Let's talk about Tripoli. For sure. Um, personally. Okay. I love, I love when Trip drops. I love Trip drop. Uh, only because 
he has not only with him being, you know, uh, a legend and, you know, as far as like, you know, the history of Reach being sure. there from the very beginning, um, but seeing his evolution and seeing the new things that come out of him. Uh, it, it's just so refreshing For and it's sure. crazy because he's been with Reach since the beginning um, so many great releases like At the Cross and mm. Lay Down and Glory Confetti so let's talk about the the year that Trip Stone, had. For sure that's, that's a great way to kind of look at it because when you said you love when Trip drops I think if you're a Trip Lee fan you know that people would say well it's, just, it's a fact Trip has sometimes you know been a little a little distant um and all of the, that's due to a number of reasons yeah, family yeah. transition and his health yeah shout out trip lee mm -hmm. this brother has been consistent so consistent man in an age and era where hip-hop is sometimes struggling to like you know grow and mature and still be relevant and mm -hmm. fresh um trip lee has like this is this is second um album second year dropping an album mm -hmm. which is like at this stage of his career doing it for so long and yeah. People sometimes forget, like Trip Lee is Trip Lee's, Trip Lee's not old. Like Trip Lee's was no. started rapping at like fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I think yeah. sometimes we put him in a bracket that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, outside of the the age bracket that he actually exists in because he started doing it so young. Yeah. But we forget Trip Lee's like you put him on like he's peers with Andy yes. and KB. Yes. And, and so, but shout out to the marketing team, uh, D D as uh, uh, SVP of marketing and digital. She had a strategy for Trip Lee that. Um, I, I can take no credit for, which was how do we get someone who has such a legacy career be mindful of the way people consume music in this era, mm -hmm. which is being consistent and fighting for quality. So obviously artists like a triple, he's a, he's an album artist by, by default, mm -hmm. right? That's his natural leaning. And he was so humble enough to like trust the team to be like, yo, why don't we take what you are great at, which is being a, a great uh, communicator for the Lord, um, someone who narrates so well and like points people to Christ makes dope art and has a really dope aesthetic yeah. but let's create a singles rollout and bite sized moment so Tripoli bought into the he bought into it I mean he literally bought into it and the marketing team kills it with like the aesthetic thread of yes. every song yes. every piece of art visual and content was so like seamless you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so we started off the year with At The Cross shout out Madison Ryan Ward Ugh. I, I mean, I knew we gotta that. have her on the show, Ace. Oh yeah, we I, have to have her on Madison, the show. Madison, what's up? Well, mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna have to have that. That's that's the 2024 thing. For but sure. um, I mean, it set the year off. When I heard that record, I I heard it um before she was on the hook, and I I actually stood up. I was like, yo, this is such a great record because of like what it communicates, and he's rapping and he's telling a story and a line in it. I want to like kind of emphasize was um. Even all my losses and my gains, I leave them at mm, the cross. Yeah. What a profound and Madison mentioned to Trip that she loved that line when he sent him the song, sent her the song to do because I think a lot of times we are celebrating the things that were given up at the cross. Yeah. But Trip Lee flips it. Mm. I'm gonna give up my victories too, which is so countercultural. You know what I'm saying? It is. What better person to do that than Trip? But yeah. And then we kept the singles rollout going with um we had Lay Down, we had uh Glory, which which sampled the Fred Hammond joint. Yeah, oh <laughs> man, that was so oh, that was so and, good. And I know KB had a same sample and they found a it was a coincidence that they yes. sampled the same song. And those those they're like brothers and found a, a unique way to kind of tie that moment in. And then he had uh Confetti. And then he had this record standby with oh, Hovey. I love standby. I mean, he, Trip, Trip Lee was on a run. Trip was on one. And one thing I love is that um, you would think that, it, like, because, like, how are you saying how because he's uh, distant for a little bit that he would dial back and yeah. things like that. But to go head first and be consistent and drop so many great things. And I love I love even seeing um, New School come in with the OG. For you sure. know what I'm saying? For so sure. see, hearing standby, I was like, oh, man. Just no, I feel like that was just, like, yeah. an amazing merge, just knowing who Trip is and how, like, you know, of course, like, with him, how um, other his past have being a pastor, like, you For know, sure. you hear that lyrically when he when he's on the song and then knowing who all who Hovey is and things For like sure. that in a year and the, like songs like used by you and alter things like that. Yeah. When hearing standby come together, it yeah. was just like the perfect mesh. It, it was, was just like, it was. Uh, and, and I mean, I love the lyrics in that hook. Like he can lift your burdens when, when your hands tie. Mm -hmm. Like that, that I think people needed to hear that song. Yeah. Um, and feel that message. And I think standby with the singles rollout that Trip was doing, that he was putting together, uh, that he trusted the team to help us do. Mm -hmm. Standby was like the perfect way to kind of complete that single series. And then we got straight into the epilogue album, which was featuring the Kirk yes. record. Mm. And so funny thing about that song, uh, Mercy, um, shout out um, Jordan, Alex, 
um, for definitely killing that record. Um, it was so dope. The marketing team, man, they'd be killing it. They'd be like, you know, tapping into different resources and pitting our music in places and spaces where sometimes you're going to be in the unchurched a little bit, which I think is good. It is. I'm always yeah. a fan of disrupting the scroll. So um, Kirk, uh, Kirk um, is obviously like fun to watch, mm-hmm. entertaining. Yeah. And um, that song, the clip of their content was posted on a lot of like hip hop and mainstream blogs. Oh, So yeah. like, for those who follow spiritual world, which I don't say you need to follow, because some stuff on there be a little sketchy. Um, <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. You know, nah, facts. I yeah. Agree, so, yeah. but I was. Um, it's it's always interesting for me to see our artists have content on like not like home team spaces, mm. like on like major outlets. And yeah. so they posted a clip of Kirk and Trip of the song Mercy on their on their platform, and I was going through the comments, and it was so refreshing to see like people who were like probably fans of 116 or, or, or Triply when they were in their younger years, they were like, oh, I miss Trip. Where's he mm, been? I'm going to yeah. check this song out. Yo, like this is, oh, he's with Kirk. And it was just like a moment, I think, for us to kind of see that the music that we're making has touched so many people. Yeah. And we had the opportunity with, with with that song to reel some people back in. That's good. You know that you, I'm happy you, they had good comments. I'm like, I'll be ready to fight in the comments. <laughs> Yo. I'm not going to lie to you. People, I'll be like, nah, y'all just don't want to hear us. No, there was, there was, there was, there was, so there was, there was, ha- I'm, but, but overall, I'm <laughs> overall, happy the right, fact right. that, because like you said, like we, right. it's, it's good because we know home team got us. You know what I'm saying? Like we know the home, home team, team is us. always going to be here, but like, you know, to be able to be put in spaces like BET, Revolt, right, like, sure. you know, other of these platforms where we can, grab those who are you know who are, are, are maybe not be as knowledgeable of the discography and things sure. like that it's a win it's a win it's and, a and there were some comments in there where you like you know it's gonna be a little it's it's it's, it's like you're in you're in the um the wilderness essentially yeah. mm-hmm. oh, like and you in the you in the world so it's like but i think overall people were who were i, I it reminded i think trip and me like yo the music that god entrusted us to make has been um, not just limited to like the Christian hip hop industry. It's mm-hmm. been spilling out in other spaces. And so, yeah, shout out Trip for killing the epilogue album and just, you know, having a second win in his career. Super yeah, dope. for sure. Listen, let's talk about Lima Blaze, man. man. I feel he definitely had his chance to shine this year as well. And I just love, man, I, I be feeling like I'm going to the motherland. You know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? I be feeling like, Come like, on. give me my Jolof rice. You know Yo, what I'm you saying? You got it. You know, Liberia uh, got the best. So, so many songs like uh, Put It On God and Two and Beautiful Day. Um, what was it like tapping in with Limo this year? So, you know, Limo, Limo is this, um, you know, he's one of the most consistent um, artists I've ever worked with. Mm-hmm. I think I think everybody here would echo that. He's just like, he's like an entrepreneur who makes music, essentially. Mm, I see that. You know what I I'm saying? That. Very yeah, yeah. like strategic, intentional about like making sure that his business is being um, managed well and that his brand is going out for um, in, a, in a really fresh way. But yeah, so there's never going to be a year where we're like, yo, we didn't get no Limo music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's I, always thinking. He's always on it. Um, I think um, at, coming out the gyro, the year we had in 2022, it's like a, a sense of like, man, how do we like follow this up? And um, I think it, I think Limo is just so consistent. Like the the, the two record and that that two pack was cool to kind of set things off. But shout out Limo, his power of using social media. Um, put it on God record. He had played me that record in Studio C when he was in the states, um, and um, I heard it and I was like, bro, this is this is this is special. Um, let's treat this one with care. And he knew it. He got anatorial on it, and she's amazing at social. <laughs> Like she just she just knows what she's doing. Yeah. Um. And then the content of that song, like, to put it on God, like I think Limo actually shared on his on his on his post a couple people who resonated with that song because it was their top song for rap this year, which is like, man, people were going through such you know tough things and that song helped them through it. But um, they posted that joint and it was just going viral. Yeah. Like that that message that message, I was like, man, because I I kind of had this idea of like, yo. Not that I'm trying to beat songs. You probably think I'm kind of competitive, but I was like, man, we got to figure out how to like compete with desire. Yeah, get better. No, but that's, but that's <laughs> you know a good thing to get better and to be able to put that. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, a good attribute. So I, 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 that song came out, did really well, mm-hmm. and it just it just kind of kicked the year off for Limo. I feel like, and then we got um, shout out Madison Ryan Ward again. Damn, we gonna have her on the show, Ace. We gonna have to. We have um, to. she did her song, on, her feature on Pretty Day, mm-hmm. which was, I mean, that song was just we 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 knew that song was good, right? Limo had that song for probably like a year and a half mm. um, before Madison was on it. Um, and we knew it was good, but the fans, like people just connected to it. I think there is something about um, when Christian artists make like songs like Pretty Day where yeah. it's like, it's not intentionally worshipful. It's not ex- super explicit, but the expression and the acknowledgement 
of the goodness of God in a very simple way. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna be a pretty day. I think people that were going through like mental health struggles started mm-hmm. posting that song. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I see the value. I see the utility. Right. But we just didn't know, and it, yeah. it, it just kind of took off. Um, and then we got to the Desire remix with Caleb Gordon, mm-hmm. and then Limo just so there's so much I can say about Limo. Um, there's a guy artist named Victor um, who had a, had a season with his Bless song and Afrobeat culture la- last year. His song was like international and global. Um, so Limo collaborated with him uh, for My Matter uh, featuring Becca Folks and that song just went up and so he just kind of just was going going crazy and then I think there's another song that we made that so we have this song Over which just came out mm-hmm, right um, yeah, yeah we had made that record probably like seven eight months ago so sometimes like, what we do with me we be making songs and we have songs that we like that we uh-huh. think could perform well but sometimes you just don't know like something Andy said which I think is a bar the artists make the music, the fans make the hits. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like we wow. can't, we can't control. Yeah. Like we can. I mean, yeah. yes, we do be intentional. Like I want to make a song that can have this emotion and have this impact. But at the end of the day, God allows us the music to go forward, mm-hmm. and you just don't know what you're gonna get back. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you think something's gonna be the one. Yeah. And then, wow. and it just, <laughs> it's just. I didn't think of it like that because I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna get mad at y'all because I was gonna say why y'all sit on music for so long. No, I you mean, make me mad. You, you know, we, but 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 it's it's good to be intentional. Yeah, it's good to be strategic. Of course, like with marketing and things like that. Yeah. But because you want to make sure that it's uh, received well. Yeah, you want to like, mm-hmm. and we want to make sure that the stuff that you guys are playing on your playlist, like I don't want to infringe on anybody's ear space. Mm-hmm. Like taking your 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 drive or your moment to spend three minutes on a song. And listen to the whole thing and run it back. Yeah. I don't take it lightly. So shout out to the fans. But yeah, Over was a song that we had the early sketches on. We loved it. We mm-hmm. liked it. But I mean, we didn't, we kind of like, well, you know, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Limo, like he always does, teasing it out. On, we knew we wanted to drop it at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and shout out to Ellie uh, Lion Bear, who's featured on it. And um, he started teasing it on socials. And it just started going up on TikTok. People were just using the song. And I was reminded again the messaging and the music, like, you know, making dope songs, having dope beats, being talented. Yes, 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 yes. At the end of the day, what is the song feeding people's spirit? Mm -hmm. And that I think is what the secret sauce is and what makes a song truly great in our space. And not even just Christian space, but just like, what is the song feeding people that's giving them a a sense of like, like uplifting and inspiring them to like think great of themselves. You know what I'm saying? So that record went up. It's out going crazy and Limo just continues to crush and had a really great year. Crushed it for real. Now we got to talk about Cray because Cray still dropped this year too with your power. Yeah. Um, And I know this one's special. I can, man, I feel like, I feel like I'm talking so much, but there's so much to say. So I try to make this quick because your power was a moment in itself. Mm, Yeah. But Cray didn't drop that much this year, but I think this record was said a lot. Special, yeah. It's super special. Um, This song was supposed to be on Church Close 4, um, but we kept it off. Why? Because we felt like it was too powerful, no pun. Like we thought mm. it was too big of a moment to wow. be packaged into like that that great body of work. Like it, we feel like it would have kind of got lost in the sauce. You know what I'm saying? So we kept it. Um, we got Tasha to cut it. Um, reworked the production. Jew, Swoop, Alex, Dre, hell, every, everybody. There was so many hands on that so record. Many hands. And we we kind of had an idea. Like I think this song can like probably get like you know Grammy nominated. We think we're not sure. <laughs> You know, you know, we think you know. Um, song came out. There was there was supposed to be like some more marketing activations that were supposed to go on with it. And it just didn't happen. So we were like, oh, you know, we wanted to do more with it. Um, but the song came out. People was like definitely well receiving it, rocking with it. But it just it, it was cool. Like it was a great moment. And Lecrae, as someone who's been like a Grammy Award winning artist, who doesn't do it for that at all. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, man, we submit like we we always submit all of our records for like Grammy consideration. Um, but we don't think of it. We, we don't really do a lot of like campaigning. Yeah, like let's see what happens. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah. You see other artists. I'm not trying to throw shade, but for whatever reason, and maybe I think it's a good thing. Some labels and artists, yo, for, for your consideration, vote mm. for this song. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a little bit of po- it is. It's some politics that go mm. into awards. That's why I don't, I don't want artists to feel, don't feel slighted if you're not nominated. Like it's not about this song being great per se. It's a lot that goes into it that mm. doesn't validate you as an artist, right? So we just submitted it. We weren't thinking nothing of it. And then we got the nomination back. Mm-hmm. And it was nominated for Gospel uh, Best Contemporary Christian Song of the Year. Um, that's, I think it's just nothing. But, you know, we make the music. 
And God, like God uses the fans and the people to make the hits. We Absolutely. don't really control how it's received, right? We just try to make our best song we can. And um, that was honestly a surprise. Man, listen, surprises on hits, on everything. Yeah. The, the, the momentum that you guys were able to keep up this year with so many artists, with so many, with on their own journeys of life and have yeah. their own way of creative, uh, creative artistry yeah. and the way how everything was able to just work for everybody. For sure, is, yeah. It's just been amazing. And uh, when we come back, we're going to wrap up uh, wrap up reach wrapped with um tadashi and what up rg and we just going to dive into just like what this whole year has been for the reach artist so don't go anywhere we're here at the 116 life here on holy culture radio sirius xm channel 140 we'll be right back Welcome back to the 116 Life right here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 140. I'm your host today, solo host, because you want to know why we got Ace in the guest seat, because we're doing Reach Wrapped. We're talking all about the amazing songs, amazing projects that dropped that came out of the house of Reach Records. And Ace is giving us all the behind the scenes scoop, all, all things behind the scenes and giving us his intake yeah. on everything that came out this year. Let's talk about What Up RG. Nah. Okay, so with so many different things, God made a way within itself what did so well this year, man. And I feel like that song just like is such a feel good song. And it, may, it, it I think it's something that everyone can always just like relate to, like believer side sure. of saying how God made a way. And then um, I don't, my Spanish is a little rough, y'all. So I may mess this up. <laughs> ben, say it, Ace. Bendicion. <laughs> Bendicion. See, okay. So yeah. Bendicion and then Digital and Heaven on Earth. So let's talk about uh, the year that RG yeah. had with all the music that he dropped. Shout out Raul. You know what I'm saying? Northside Hero. I feel like, so God Made a Way, um, I mean, the song is like just an amazing testimony to just trusting the Lord with your art. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's been well documented that you know what up rg went through like a season of depression before new hollywood new hollywood came out in 2022 there's an episode on it you can watch for those who want to get a little backstory but um he had made god made a way in 2022 after new hollywood i think it was already turned in just randomly in studio d mm -hmm. um and i just happened to pull up on him um so i i had sent him the beat like a pack of beats mm -hmm. like i think probably like a month before he had picked that beat and I'm glad that he did because I, I kind of wanted him to rap to it. So um, I'm just casually in the studio walking by. He's like, yo, Ace, check this out. Plays me the song. I think Lecrae comes in and we're just like, bro, what are you doing? Drop this tomorrow. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. drop this record. And he was just like, I don't know. I like it, but I don't know if it embodies my true sound. You know, RG's a, he's a purist. He's a, he's a, he's a, I feel like I'm better as a creative and a, uh, in my position because he's, he cares about the art so much mm -hmm. where you have to respect his integrity as an artist um, and, and, and his reasons for sometimes not being sure if every song needs to come out. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, yo, this got to come out. Yeah. <laughs> You're tripping. Right. And so he finally like tweaked the beat some and put some effects on it to kind of make it feel more like him. Um, and so the song wasn't really, it, it didn't come out till like April. Like, it came out like six months later. Like that song is a song that I, I was like, yo, I love this record. Mm -hmm. I want this to come out, but I want RG to want it to come out too. Yeah. But, you know, God's timing is the best. Um, it finally comes out and it just crushes. Like, and I think there is just like a little A&R hack that I think artists can definitely be mindful of as you're creating. Not to like, you don't want to strategize like making songs that are catchy and just, and, and lose all your artistic integrity. Mm -hmm. But I think in today's era, I said this earlier, there is some, some, some science or some math that goes into what I think are songs that have high utility on social media or in the era the way people consume music. Like the, the phrase that pays, the statement, the messaging, what is a song about? Obviously the production gotta be solid. It's gotta make you feel a certain ways, right. but what is a song, what does it embody? What does it make you think about? And I think that statement, God made, stayed down, came up, God made a way. Whether you're in church, out of church, uh, walking away, deconstructing, whatever you are going through, even if you're kind of like agnostic, but have faith leanings, that message is powerful. Stayed down, came up. People who don't even know that they know, know God can can really sing that song. Because everyone's had hard times. Like, you know, everyone's been at the bottom. So when you think about it, the song makes you feel up. Like, like it makes you feel as if you came from the bottom and then now you're on top. You know what I'm saying? For so sure. that, that definitely transpires with the record. It definitely, and, and I think, RG's authentically communicating his real life mm -hmm. in that song. So it's not like a, let's make a song to be catchy that embodies his things to get streams and plays. Nah, this is really his real life. 
Song goes up, goes crazy. Um, the video was shot. Oh, the video, I love the, the video. The video was insane. Oh, crazy. Dude, I can't even, I don't even have nothing to say about that video. <laughs> okay, so what else um, about uh, RG? I know no. that another big thing that I love, which was probably, for me, one of my favorite things, not even just out of reach, but out of just the space, the CHH space in general, was um, him kind of quarterbacking Heaven on Earth, the collective. Sure. Um, when... What, what was your reaction to, you know, hearing about, you know, the collective, hearing the music, sure. so on and so forth? No, it was dope. I mean, he had showed me um, the early stages of this thing he wanted to do, you know, outside of uh, like, like kind of like an independent group release. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was really dope. We wanted to encourage him. And um, I heard some of the early ideas and I was just like, this is phenomenal, like mm -hmm. sonically, production wise. And I love when like believers artists can come together in any capacity and just stand on business stand yeah. on stand on kingdom business essentially right. like standing on kingdom <laughs> business that's facts we can go yeah. ahead and we can go ahead and like pit that somewhere but no i i think it's just it just shows camaraderie and unity cuz i mean for example trip lee uh was saying how like his son q um loved like the whole heaven on earth project mm -hmm. and i think there's something special about him loving it it's like if you're like a younger person, specifically like high school, whatever, seeing like gang, essentially like people ganging up before a positive purpose, like on like like for the Lord, onto the Lord, and it's dope. It says so much. So yeah, so digital drop went up, and that was like a prelude to his Heaven on Earth project, which I think was a dope project. And um, yeah, and we just saw RG live in Atlanta at at Vinyl where he did a um, one of his like tour stops um as he plans to try to go on tour later yeah, right. later next year um show was incredible Ar artistically and aesthetically everything was dope so yeah he just had a good year he got some new stuff but next year that's gonna be crazy so yeah shout out raul you know what i'm saying how has it been because you've seen rg from the beginning yeah. seeking him out being on the label and everything right. like that seeing who he is now how yeah. has that growth been yeah. for you seeing that firsthand i think um shout out to the culture here where we do really well signing artists who are at their beginning stages, like before the world can kind of see what it's going to be. Like you take RG, you take Hovey, you take one. These, we, when these, these people are like 20, 20, 19, 20 years old, like before they, they're coming into their adulthood, mm -hmm. which obviously there's some things we learned about that too. But uh, with RG, he came in, he's always been a creative, always been a, someone who has been fighting for like artistic integrity and I think one thing I've seen him grow in, which has been amazing, is the way he communicates his faith as like a pure artist has sharpened. Like he has found a way to express his faith in such a unique way where it's not even like trying to be ambiguous, trying to cover it up or trying to be um, like, yo, this is like I'm a Christian making art. It's like, nah, it's like explicitly, unashamedly Christian, but it's done in such a high artistic way where you gotta respect it and you I think he's killing it. it yeah you, you got to it's you, like, you can't help you it. can't help to it, like he went from little like, holy to big holy now you angels know all saying? around me and Liddy it's electric like come on man. no like like really it, yeah. it's, it's really been dope seeing cause I've been um, rocking since I mean uh, I mean my, one of my favorite projects is Pleasant Hill oh, Pleasant you know Hill, what I'm okay, saying yeah, so yeah. like you know to see yeah. the growth from him to now and even like knowing the opposition he had when it came sure. to Hollywood yeah, 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 seeing him sure. press through that and see who, what he was able to do this year has been phenomenal yeah. okay so we gotta get into some uh, we'll touch a little bit on Summer 23 okay. which everyone looks forward to every yeah. single year what, what, how how different was this playlist from any other playlist I think that the, I think, uh, we just I think dropped the, out that's a great, I think the one thing I would say about Summer 23 this past uh, year was Shout out my team, um, Stay Low. Mm, Shout out like CC. It, it, it's something about <laughs> Stay Low that just hit. It just hit. When you see like women rapping on fire for the Lord over that like aggressive beat and that like very um, like chant on the hook, it was amazing. It was it was a, it was a special moment. Um, shout out you know Toya Love, Reese Lachey, Child Like CC. Um, yeah, it was just a moment. So yeah, I can't even say more about Summer 23. I feel like Stay Low was just so, so important. It was, no, it was definitely a staple, yeah. I would say. Now let's talk about Tadashi, the year yeah. he Yeah, T-Dot, T-Dot, man. T-Dot, T-Dot, you know, he went through a lot. Like he he talked about it, which I think it would be dope to have him on the show to actually, yes, to sure. actually deconstruct mm -hmm. a little bit. <laughs> on the 2022 Unashamed Tour, he like had a terrible accident, um, was like in bandages. And Tadashi like, like people don't know this about well he's kind of said it a little bit but he was literally fighting for his life fighting mm -hmm. for his mental health fighting for his spiritual health um and he just will not go down 
Like Tadashi will not. He he's just so relentless. Like it's encouraging to me to see a brother who's like been through so much like death and grief and destruction, and he's still like something I say about Tadashi. Like obviously I'm not trying to like age him out, but I, let's just say when he started rapping, there's so many rappers in mainstream who literally cannot rap anymore. Like they don't love hip hop. They try. Oh yeah. Like they're 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 culturally irrelevant. Mm. And to to him to still be doing what he's doing. And still be great at it, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's like it's got to be God, you know what I'm saying? So he dropped the MMA freestyle, which was some people when, when he dropped that freestyle. I know some people were like, "Yo, I forgot that Tadashi because he's been doing like his melodic, yes, like pop thing a little bit." Yeah, Yo, I forgot he can rap. He though. can spit for real. Come yes, on. Tadashi's a, he can, he can really rap. Like that's yeah. his thing. And the uh, Dead or Alive um, Part One, um, the the EP was so so phenomenal. Family Tree. Victory Lab. There was some joints on there. So I think he just wanted to remind himself and the fans that, yo, I still got it. No, he, he still, shows that for sure. What, it, so. what is it like um, seeing... Because uh, I, I, when I think about Trip and yeah. I see... Um, T dot and uh, I mean, of course, Cray. Well, what what is it like seeing them move with the times in the, the evolution of culture and music so well you know what i'm saying like how you you see some people where they fall off because they just they're just not in touch anymore they just like they think that oh well i mean i my best stuff was back then i can't keep up with these young bucks now but (laughs) to see these to see the three of them like i want texas pete was one of my favorites texas pete uh, summer 23 because it's just like they just the way they held Mm. it down showed that they still got it what's it like seeing them progress and move forward with everyone else keeping up with the new school and everyone yeah i think i think um they've been really intentional about keeping a, a dope community around them where they allow other people to help sharpen them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I, when I, what I mean by that is, you know, they'll invite me and my team or even um, some of the other artists on the roster to like speak into the music. And I think there are a lot of artists who, um, who are talented and they're really good, but maybe their art isn't progressing, not because they don't have the talent, but they're not inviting other people into their artistic community. Mm-hmm. And that can be a, a stumbling block for growth. And that's where at time, even I'm I'm not immune to it as well. It's like if you want to progress and let me let me just say this. It's not about staying young. It's not about Lecrae or Tadashi or Tripoli being what the young people are. That, that is like probably your fastest way to not be relevant. That's your quickest way to tell your age <laughs> is to try to be young. And right. there's probably been some blind spots on things that may have come out of this mm-hmm. building that. You can argue, well, Ace, what about that? I'm like, all right, look, I'm not saying that we're perfect at it or without fault. What I'm saying is the best way to um, age grace- gracefully in hip hop is to be mindful of culture, not like appropriate it. And I think if you being mindful of culture means surrounding yourself with people who have um, a younger perspective and just learning how they receive your music and finding out how to... F- you know, age in a way that's like, like, like basically mindful of how you like naturally create and like legitimately, uh, you know what I'm saying? Authentic and like, all right, this is where we're at. This is what I do. How do I apply what I do into where we're at? That's good. And I think that's then the secret sauce on some of the artists like a Tripoli, Tadashi, um, you know, uh, Lecrae, even like some mainstream artists like a J. Cole. Yes. It's like, yo, let's, let's not, appropriate the youth let's be mindful where they're at and find out how do i apply where i'm at into what's going on you know Man, what I'm saying? i tell y'all ace is a gold mine that's why i was excited to just, just hearing your because you're behind the scenes and also because you're creative hearing your take and how uh things just move because you're so knowledgeable on culture just music producing all of that um hearing your take on how things move um in this house here for sure. is just, uh, it's, just it's, it's, it's impeccable. I love being able to hear what you have to say. So let's, last but not least, let's talk about the kid, Young Otto. <laughs> young Otto! 1K Few. Now here's my yeah. question. Why y'all letting Few tease us with, with this <laughs> this project? We were we, we praying for Atlanta for weeks. We always going to pray for Atlanta, but we ready for the music. But we're going to get into that later. So let's talk about On Fire, the it's new that's going to be on the way, you know what I'm saying, when yeah. it comes to uh, Favorite Trapper. Uh, talk about Few and how nah, he's been so, tapping in for 2023. What I heard you say is, yo, Ace, we praying for Atlanta, but we praying for the praying for Atlanta we project. We praying for the praying for Atlanta project. <laughs> yes. Um, on Fire, um, Zaytoven. Um, you know, Few's just authentically culture. You know, he's authentically Atlanta. Authentic. We got to have him on the show soon. Hey, do. Zay and Few, we got to... No, I ain't, ain't, no, ain't going to say so too much because I think we would be redundant because mm-hmm. they're coming on soon right yeah for sure yeah we're we gonna make that happen but um 
I think that it just, you know, embodies who he is naturally. Like Atlanta, trap music, ch- Zay, church musician, few. Go- I'm not even going to say Christian hip hop. I'm going to say gospel rap. Yeah. I think that embodies who he is. Um, and that song, it just says so. Atlanta, hip hop specifically, oh, sorry, hip hop overall. And then Atlanta specifically has just been through a tumultuous time in terms of hip hop and culture. That's losing takeoff. That's, you know, it's fresh right now. The YSL trial with, with Young Thug. Literally, I can't say too much, but we have, uh, I, I met someone who used to be a part of the, that entourage who was wow. on the business side um, that uh, recently found the Lord. And um, and we're, we're having like conversations about culture and faith and sharing ministry. And they're saying how much they're appreciative to find our music and find a way to, and so that Pray For Atlanta project, that On Fire song, is not just a song. It's literally like a street reporter and culture mm-hmm. and seeing what's going on in culture. And while everybody's picking sides and rambling about hip hop should do this and fighting, few is just saying like, yo, we need to be careful and mindful of what's happening literally down the street okay. and in hip hop in Atlanta. And as a gospel rapper, this is my voice. This is me tapping into culture using somebody like Zaytoven and saying look we need to just wake up a little bit and, and pray for our city and pray for our culture pray for our the art form that God has given us and what better person to do it than someone who's authentically can stand on what they saying about yes whereas like you don't have to like go through my lyrics and try to like say well you saying that but mm-hmm. when I hear your song if he lives that life for real he lives that life for real it's authentic you it know is. what I'm saying so I think that's I'll say, yeah, it's a, he's, he's, an, he's an important piece to what we do here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm For saying? For sure. So listen, so wrapping everything up, um, looking at all the artists um, in its entirety, mm-hmm. um, how do you feel? Because you, yeah. you, you had a hand in everyone releasing this year in all different ways, shapes, and for, uh, forms and fashions. Um, how do you feel looking back on all the things that was created, all for the sure. things that the progress, all the wins that came out of Reach this year? No, for sure. I, I just want to say shout out God, obviously, for allowing... Um, me to do this and then set out the team uh, the Reach Records roster the staff the marketing team the digital team the studio team man the mixed man Biz and his crew amazing at making sure everything sounds sonically right and I I just want to say like you know in an era where like hip hop statistically is having like extreme decline in terms of sales and streams this is not just me the presumably old head saying it this is not just the Christian dude saying it this is like literally data that's in code. This is people like Lil Yachty saying to J. Cole, man, like hip hop has been got to come better. And I feel like there's a unique opportunity for us as Christian hip hop artists and, and record labels and A&Rs and execs to take this opportunity to not, um, you know, fumble the bag. Fumble. Like we have to really make great art that points to culture that uplifts God and just and I think Christian hip hop is in a unique space to be the voice in hip hop to yeah. redeem it essentially on a, on a, on a larger scale. So I don't take it lightly. So that's what we're here trying to do every day. Yeah, and, uh, I, I lo- it's it's beautiful seeing uh, a label, musicians, creatives who are not tone deaf. It's so beautiful to be able to see that because we have um, a lot of artists and people who are, of course. There's nothing wrong with saying Jesus. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. But being able to fuse that into culture, because Jesus wasn't culture. You for know what sure. I'm saying? For and sure. to, for, um, to be able to speak where people are, to speak what's happening, yeah. and be able to move along with it, but yet give hope yeah. and within that is so encouraging. I've always heard that what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Mm-hmm. And the fact that so many hearts here have been... Uh, communicated through music and through sonics have been able to reach the hearts of so many has been a blessing to see this year and so we're so excited that you guys were able to be tapped in all year round and listen get ready for 2024 because it's going to be an amazing year to hear everything that's going to come out of here thank you Ace, for switching sides for once <sighs> thank, you know what i'm saying them. for thank being you. for being the guest this week and for also for everything that you've been able to uh, put your hands to when it comes to everyone here. I know everyone speaks so highly of you. And of course, we always see why. But listen, thank you guys for tuning in once again. This has been Reach Wrapped. We wrapped all the amazing projects that came out of this house. And we're so excited to see what comes out next year. And you do not want to miss it. Listen, I'm Mia Evans. I am your host. And this has been the 116 Life right here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. We'll see you soon.